While the causes and effects of a midlife crisis are still up for debate, most people can agree on some of the traits that come along with it. Popular cliches aside, middle age is often characterized by a sense of dissatisfaction and restlessness, especially if you're suddenly finding yourself unhappy at work, waking up in the middle of the night, or feeling like there's something more out there. As a young adult, your dreams don't seem so far off. You can be anything you want to be. The world is yours for the taking. As you age, however, the harsh realities of life begin to set in. Your options are fewer, your future uncertain. But this is part of the process, and confronting one's mortality can be a positive thing. This facing of one's mortality can often mean we achieve a greater sense of fulfillment in life that the things we do indeed matter. Considering the bigger picture can make us reevaluate our priorities and act accordingly. The pursuit of happiness has become a 20th century craze. We've scanned the world for its most idyllic beaches and taken up meditation as a way to achieve inner peace. Yet not all of us are happy. Research suggests that an obsession with our happiness can make us miserable. When you're always working towards a goal or fulfilling an obligation, it can be hard to stop and smell the roses. But when we're able to shift our focus off ourselves, we're more likely to find joy and fulfillment in our day-to-day -day lives. And happiness comes as a byproduct of being engaged with the world around us, whether that's through a hobby or a job that requires us to help others. Since middle age often comes with changing priorities, it's natural to review your life and second-guess your decisions. But if you're happy with how you've lived your life so far, don't let the thoughts of what if destroy your contentment. Take a page from the wise and accept that there are roadblocks in life, but that doesn't mean you can't reach your version of happiness. Sometimes, there are tough decisions. You can't always do everything. Sometimes you have to make a choice. No matter what your decision is, it will haunt you. For example, if you don't choose to be a lawyer and become a pianist instead, you'll probably regret not being able to practice law, but regretting the piano doesn't seem like such a bad thing. One way to overcome this dilemma is to focus on what's important to you instead of what'll happen if you make the wrong decision. It's never easy to accept our mortality or the inevitability of death, especially when we're not ready. These notions were distant worries that seemed impossible to obtain as young adults. However, as we age, we're forced to face this reality as it slowly settles in. Death is an inevitable part of the human condition. Whether we're ready for it or not, we all must face the reality of death, and with that, the inevitability of our demise. But philosophers have been teaching us how to deal with death for millennia. For philosophers, death is a familiar but uncomfortable subject, and one that they've been thinking about for millennia. In the 16th century, the French essayist Mitchell de Montaigne wrote, To philosophize is to learn how to die. He echoed a sentiment as old as philosophy itself, that philosophy is about achieving a state of mind that allows us to cope with change, including our mortality. 